Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio. And today we're going to look at RX5 and some of the new features in a nice first look. So before we do that, just know if you want more depth on October 10th, I'm going to do approximately an hour, hour and a half, where we go over a lot of the features in detail for RX5, and many of those would apply to RX4 and RX3 as well. But we're definitely going to focus on the newer features. And then on October 17th, 2015, I'm going to start a new series of boot camps for the serious people that want to take RX to the next level and be able to produce production quality audio in much less time. To really understand the tools, know how to dig in, and really solve problems. So now, RX5, here's my top three favorite new tools. Now, number one, I love the new instant process, and I'm going to show you that and how it works in just a second. Number two, we're going to look at module chains and what they're all about. Those are really slick. I love that. And then the third thing we'll take a look at is the corrective EQ, and I'll show you some details there. So the first thing is my audio has some clicks in it. And most of you know we could take this. Let me play this for you real quick. So that's a pretty nasty click. And if I took the whole file and took the declick module, the one problem with that is that these are really, really loud and very wide clicks. So by default, the declicker isn't going to get those. If I just batch process the whole thing, it'll get some. But you'll notice that when it's done, it doesn't take everything away there. And if I listen to it again, still there. If you really know what you're doing with the declicker, I can get 90, 95% of those clicks out of there. But in this case, these are pretty severe clicks. And I'm going to show you, after you've run your declicker, a lot of times you'll have a few stray things that need to be cleaned up by hand, and that's where instant process comes in. So the first thing we're going to do is look at instant process. And with instant process before that, in the old days, two weeks ago, what I had to do was paint this, and then I would pick a module. I could either use declick or my go-to tool, which is spectral repair. I'd probably have that up and choose process, and then boom, that's gone. We go ahead over here and we're going to choose, let me make that a little narrower, there it is, and process, and that's gone. And I have keyboard shortcuts for all that, by the way, so I normally would have just taken this and pressed my shortcut, and that applied spectral repair with the current settings, and that's fine. So I would paint, press my keyboard, paint, press my keyboard, and it was done. And this little thing here, I might want to paint that out and do that as well. But spectral repair is very smart. It's not just... Uh, turning down the volume. It's looking at what's before and after, and I'll go over that tool in more detail. But if you know how spectral repair works, you know it's an awesome tool for this kind of spot cleaning, but it takes doing it a little bit to make it work. So what we do instead is now, let me undo all that. So we're now back to the beginning. We have our clicks again. I'll turn on instant process and make sure I'm going to turn it over to attenuate, and it has a set of tools. Attenuate is just one of them, and then at the very bottom is Replace. It's in alphabetical order, and that corresponds to this tab in Spectral Repair. So what this tool is doing is based on what you pick. If you're on D-Click, if I open the D-Click module, whatever my settings are for D-Click, that's what it's going to do. It's going to use these settings if I'm on D-Click, and now I can just paint a problem, and boom, it just applied declick, but boy, it was smart. It looked at the click there and said, hmm, I can use this better tool on that, and it just used interpolate. If I had selected a big region here, well, this tool, interpolate, does not work on that kind of region. It switched back to declick and took all my settings that are in this dialog here, and it applied them to the range that I had. That is super slick. Now, I'm going to do undo all that, but in other words, I just get to choose my paint tool. So I could choose, if I choose the whole thing here, then it'll paint that out. It'll pick the right tool and do the right thing on D-Click. If I wasn't doing it that way, if I had it instead set to attenuate, then I could take the same thing, paint it this way, and it will use, it'll do the full spectrum there. Now that's not used to what I do. Instead, I'm just gonna take the time frequency tool and I'm gonna paint a little region of this here and it is going to apply, I'm going to close this one down, the attenuate. So what instant process is doing is a, taking my choice, and it's using the setup that I have set in here, which allows me to tweak this setup based on what I'm working with, and I have always tweaked everything. And so now whatever these settings are here, instantly I'm going to paint, and it's gone. I can pick other tools if for some reason I wanted to. Now let me, for example, take the gain tool so you can see it. But this would apply to any tool. We'll take gain. 
We'll open it up and let's look at what gain. Now I've got gain set right now to minus 35. And I have that so that you'll really see what it does. If I take one of these other tools, for example, the paintbrush tool, and I were to go through and paint out a section here and pretend I'm a really great artist, and now that's done, you can see I just painted out. Now that's going to wreck that audio. So don't do that. That's a professional technique only. If you had the uh, magic wand running here and you did that, you could take out a little thing. If you had a squeal in there, you could use the magic wand. You can always undo things. So if it doesn't work exactly how you expect it, I'll take all that stuff out. Then you can just undo them. But this is a great tool because you see it, you pick your paint tool. And what I do is I tend to live on attenuate and I live on the time frequency tool. And I'll come in here and I'll paint that out. Now you notice it didn't take out everything. It was very smart. It looked before and after because we were using spectral repair here. And because spectral repair was set up the way it was. It was looking a little before and a little after, and it made its choice. When I do it over here, it's gonna turn almost black because of what's before and after it. Same with this click that's over here. So very slick tool and very smart. A lot smarter than it looks, a lot more sophisticated than it looks because like things like D-Click are making choices within the D-Click based on what you select. So great tool, quick, easy, and you have a lot of options because I mean, I didn't really even show you could apply the lasso tool and pick anything you want, and you notice it just dimmed that out just a little bit. That's all based on the settings that I had in Spectral Repair, but I can choose a set of tools, the right tool for the job, and I should mention, you can set up keyboard shortcuts to switch between all of these quickly and easily. So you have keyboard shortcuts to, to change between which tool instant processing is used. I have a keyboard shortcut that turns it on and off. Also keyboard shortcuts, which will select which of these tools here you're using. When you combine all that, I mean, you're just painting and you're clicking and changing tools, painting, and you get really fast at it. And you'll just be blown away at what you can do with that tool. So I love that tool. I've done that thousands of times. I just, I, it's one of those things that should have been there four generations ago, but they have it now. So I'm a happy camper. The other thing is module chains. These are really cool. This is something I actually requested about uh, nine months before this thing shipped. I wanted a way to do multiple D clicks and D crackles but the problem was I, I use batch processing always i mean this on the betas i have over 250 hours that i process through batches and then i listen to all 250 hours afterward to verify i was doing the right thing and to compare it to rx4 before i actually knew and you know, i'm using this on production audio for the last couple months but this tool what it allows you to do is i have a d click and it takes some settings you set up what you want for each of these modules and you different setup for this that you'll, I don't know if you noticed, this was three and the other one was at nine. And so I can set up each of these stages, but the difference if you're, if you've done batch processing, if you're a more advanced user and you're doing batch processing, you'll look at this and go, oh, I can do all that with batch processing. And I would say, oh, no, you can't because of this. This tool is just a super fantastic thing where you want to do this. I want to select a subset of my audio. There are times and there are people, uh, narrators, people, voiceover artists, uh, podcasters, where they have a, a clicks that are all laying within a certain frequency range. And what I've been able to do with this module chain is set this up so that it will only operate within this range. And now I can run all these processes super aggressive at levels that I never would be able to run these things. So the D click, for example, this could be at eight, six. And if it is set up right in the proper range, I can run it without artifacts just in that little range. I've been able to do some things in the low end that are very special that I could never do in a batch process before because in a batch process, it's always full spectrum beginning to end of the file. This gives us the ability, if we have multiple scenes and multiple locations, to process a whole series of steps just on a subset of audio, both horizontally and vertically. And for, you know, if you've been around this for a while, you know that's going to give you this is frequency selection, the other one's time. But the big point is I have some flexibility here way different than batch files. So I love that tool. I'm really happy about that. And it's a home run there. People will underestimate it. You're going to hear all sorts of people walk around going, oh, big deal. It's just batch processing with a different interface. It might look that way, but that just means they don't understand the tool. When they understand it, they will be amazed at what they come up with 
to solve specific problems. And that's what this is. It's a toolkit. It's not just one thing. It doesn't matter one thing. It's a comprehensive toolkit. Another thing, I had somebody send me some audio the other day, and uh, they, they complained, ah, there's this buzzing sound. I didn't hear it when I recorded it. I've got 16 hours of this thing recorded, and there was this buzz, and it was a really high-end a uh, little buzz, and it was one line, and I was able to take this tool, the new correct, Corrective EQ, and first I'll just show you, I've got it set up right now to brick wall, uh, the high end, the low end, where we were over here, brick wall this, and you see I'm at the very low end, I can drag these nodes around, and I'll let me process this through. So watch the audio behind the scenes. Boom, that's done. You'll notice, I could, let me just close that. So now you can see it just chopped off everything at the top here. Oh, I should go more, I should go more extreme with that. So let's take the top end just so you see. We'll give this thing a real haircut here. And boom, gone. All right. <laughs> Don't kill your audio, all right? But you could. If that's what you want to do, if that's if that's your thing in life, go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off, take that off. But they had this problem with this little buzz, and what I could do is I could take this, I can drop this node. I used the spectral analyzer, spectrum analyzer that's available here, and I found where the little notch was, and I built my own little notch filter here, and I notched it out at 400Q, and that's just absolutely killer, and I had to go about minus 15 dB, and it just blew them away at how nice the end output was. So this is a great tool. It's a real chainsaw power tool. Most people, yeah, it just was just a pretty face. What they don't realize is it's a very sophisticated EQ and what I can do with it in terms of, one, it's easy to set, it's easy to see, it's easy to understand because of the visuals on it. Uh, it's also easy to make your audio sound terrible that, that I think that some people will think sounds good. I mean, have if you don't have the experience, don't, don't do anything extreme with this. But if you need to, if you need to do something like this and put in some notch filters, it's an awesome EQ for doing all sorts of repair and not just the regular, oh, I need to bring up my low end a little bit. And yeah, you can do all that with this, but you can go way beyond. So those are our three power tools. And I really am just scratching the surface on how you could use them and some of the details of them. So watch on October 10th. So if we were after October 10th, there's a whole other video out there that's probably an hour. It'll be an interactive one. So people will be asking questions and I do them live. And that's a whole different ball game. And then uh, once a month, I do boot camps for people. And it's a very small group of people. And we're all online at the same time. And then we're going through and we're solving problems and solving real world things, saving people hours and hours of processing. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't batch process huge amounts of audio if you know what you're doing. Now, uh, you can also ruin huge amounts of audio very quickly. But you know if you know what you're doing and you have good tools, you can make the most of this stuff, and there just is no better toolkit than RX for solving problems, getting your work out faster, and having a good time doing it. So this is Don Barnes for Red Barnes Audio. This is just a taste of RX5. We'll see you on the wires. Check out the channel. Give this a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. There's more of this coming down the pike. So join us in the Facebook group to talk about this or anything else related to rescuing audio. You have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.